This young superhero can't keep balance between his passion and responsibilities and blames his parents. He faces reality only when he becomes a dad himself. Not of a human baby, but a giant monster. This is Tokyo City, located near a monster island where lives a deadly species called the Kaiju. The monsters often lose their way and hit the city, but there's someone to protect the city. The Ultraman. Beside being the biggest superhero, Ultraman is also a regular guy named Professor Sato. Saving the city and balancing it with a regular job isn't easy, but the most difficult task is being a dad. Sato has an adorable son named Kenji, whom he loves the most in this world. He's already training Kenji to be a superhero, because one day, he will be the next Ultraman. Sato always reminds his son of one thing. Being Ultraman is all about keeping the balance. Kenji doesn't understand this now, but soon he will. As he grows up, Kenji develops interest in baseball and becomes a famous player in America. However, Sato is growing old, and he asks Kenji to return to Japan and become Ultraman. Kenji gets a warm welcome, and all fans are looking forward to his first match in a Japanese team as the rules are a little different here. Kenji attends the press conference where he gets bombarded with questions because everyone wants to know more about him. Kenji answers everyone confidently because he's already pretty famous, but one question surprises him. A young female reporter named Miss Wakita wonders why Kenji returned to Japan all of a sudden when he had a successful career in America. She asks if it was emotional stress because his mother has mysteriously disappeared. Kenji gets speechless and excuses himself without answering Wakita's question. He meets the national team coach who doesn't seem amused. Kenji is a really self-centered and overconfident player who only sees himself. While the coach believes in teamwork, Kenji advises the coach to calm down and wait for him to rock on the game field. He's going to carry the team to the top. Later that night, Kenji starts his job of being the country's superhero. However, he's not as experienced as his dad and fails to control the giant kaiju. The only guidance he has is their family AI assistant, Mina. She instructs him to take the monster out of the city with as little damage as possible. But Ultraman himself causes a lot of destruction by just falling down. Eventually, the KDF Kaiju Defense Force arrives and captures the Kaiju. The Defense Force also warns Ultraman to keep out of these matters because he's not an official government agent. Ultraman gets angry and under emotional stress, he loses his powers. Kenji gets back to human form and escapes the scene. He's still really angry because things aren't as easy as his dad told him. Mina analyzes everything and concludes that KDF is using excessive agents to work efficiently while Kenji is alone. That's why he failed. Mina advises him to calm down and get back to help KDF, but Kenji is not in the mood. He just wants to go to sleep, but he still has to give an interview to Miss Wakita. She starts by asking why Kenji never won a championship. He might be good, but not a team player. This is holding him back, but Kenji doesn't want to accept that. Instead, he tells Wakita that he's not interested in winning championships. Miss Wakita moves to more personal questions and asks the reason for avoiding interviews, keeping teammates at distance and leaving behind his career in America. In response, Kenji stays quiet and keeps eating. Miss Wakita continues and asks about his life when he moved to America at a young age while his father chose to stay behind. Kenji still doesn't give a clear answer, and the interview gets interrupted by Wakita's little daughter. Meanwhile, Dr. Onda, the head of KDF, gathers his army to encourage them to fight the Kaiju. With many others, Dr. Onda also lost his family because of the Kaiju. That's why he worked for so many years to develop technologies to protect everyone. KDF is just a step away from their success. They are ready to destroy the Kaiju Island. They just need to find it. On the other hand, Kenji has no interest in defeating the Kaiju and keeps training for his next baseball game. Unfortunately, his arm is injured from the fight with Kaiju, so he can't play properly. Kenji regrets being Ultraman, but Mina reminds him that it's a responsibility. He should even take a break from baseball and focus on saving the city. Kenji immediately refuses because baseball brings him happiness while being Ultraman is just so stressful. All the news channels are humiliating him even though he didn't choose to be the superhero. To calm himself, Kenji watches the videos of his childhood and finds the message left by his mother. She wanted Kenji to work together with his dad, but Kenji hasn't contacted him in years. The next morning, thousands of fans gather in the arena to witness Kenji playing. He misses his first two shots because of his injured arm, but blames it on the other players. He decides to switch hands and hits an amazing shot. Kenji starts celebrating, but his happiness gets interrupted by a kaiju attack. It's a rare one called the Gigantron. Everyone evacuate the playground while Kenji turns into Ultraman. He punches the Gigantron for ruining his game and asks him to leave immediately. Actually, the kaijus aren't the enemies. 
they only show up accidentally or to take revenge. That's why Professor Sato avoided killing them and instructed Kenji to do the same. The KDF has already arrived and they are going to kill the Gigantron. Ultraman gets in the way while the Gigantron starts flying back home. The KDF still keeps following the Kaiju because it has stolen something from them. Ultraman asks Gigantron to give back the stolen package but he doesn't seem to be cooperating. Meanwhile, the KDF prepares missiles to kill the Gigantron. Ultraman may also get injured in this attack but Dr. Onda doesn't care. He wants back his package at any cost. After the attack, both Gigantron and Ultraman fall down in the water. The Gigantron is unconscious so Ultraman picks up the package to return it, but it turns out to be a kaiju egg. It's the KDF who stole the egg, and the Gigantron came to get it back. Suddenly the egg starts hatching in Ultraman's hands and a small kaiju comes out of it. Ultraman takes the baby home because the KDF will kill it too. He asks Mina for help, but she doesn't have much knowledge of a kaiju infant because no one ever found one. Kenji starts to stress out and turns back to his human form. Now the baby looks bigger than him. She gets scared of Kenji and starts crying loudly. Mina believes that the baby has mistaken Ultraman as her parent. Kenji immediately refuses to be a dad because he already has a lot to do. They need to take this back to her actual home, the Kaiju Island. But neither Sato nor KDF were able to locate the island. For now, Kenji puts the baby in the containment unit. Mina suggests Kenji should take help from his dad, but Kenji still doesn't want to see him. Mina calls him anyway, and he arrives really fast. Sato seems sad because the poor Gigantron died, but Kenji starts getting angry with him. Out of the whole world, he had chosen this dangerous city for his family, and when things got out of control, he dragged his son into this mess. Kenji can't forget how his dad had never time for them because he was busy being the superhero. Even when mom disappeared, Sato didn't bother to look for her. If Kenji is trying to be Ultraman, it is only because his mother wanted it too. Sato doesn't say a word and leaves. Kenji gets back to the baby and transforms in front of her so she can understand that Ultraman and Kenji are the same person. The baby stops crying but now she's hungry. Mina gives her a bunch of dishes but the baby wants to eat fish. As Kenji has no other choice, he dives in the water and brings a lot of fish for the baby. The night goes away in taking care of the baby, and Kenji completely forgets that he has a baseball game to play. He rushes to the game field but doesn't get any shot because he's too exhausted for anything. The fans leave the match in between and Kenji hasn't faced this much humiliation in his whole career. He returns home with a long face and asks Mina if she has found the island or not. Mina tries to show him the cute dance the baby prepared for him, but Kenji has no time for these things. He wants to get rid of this baby as soon as possible. Mina advises him to be more responsible because he's the one who brought the baby home. Now Kenji needs to raise her like a real parent. For the next two months, Kenji experiences the worst routine in his life. He has to raise a child, play a baseball championship and serve as a superhero all at once. Kenji keeps getting drained and fails in every aspect of his life, especially baseball. From the star player, he has become the worst player the Japan national team ever had. The coach gives him the last chance and threatens to trade him with another team. Kenji gets really angry and dumps out all his frustration on the poor baby. Afterward, he starts crying in helplessness. To cheer him up, Mina suggests that he should play a simulation baseball game, but Kenji fails to hit a single ball. Mina looks for other ways to relieve stress and asks Kenji to call a friend. However, with his self-centered nature, Kenji never made any friends. He suddenly remembers about Miss Wakita and calls her for advice. He wonders how she balances her stressful job along with her baby. Doesn't she feel like jumping out of the window? Wakita agrees that life's not easy. Kids are sometimes like little monsters but they have hearts and minds of their own. They only have their parents from whom they will learn to find their own path in life. That's the beauty of having a child. Hearing this, Kenji stares at the baby and notices how she loves watching his games and tries to play like he does. Kenji removes the shield and asks Mina to start the simulation game. Kenji starts teaching the baby the basics of the game and how to keep trying until you succeed. He has started to behave like a real dad. The next day, Kenji goes to meet Wakita at dinner while Mina takes care of the baby. Wakita has been thinking about Kenji's relationship with his dad and figured out why he's so upset. A kid doesn't want money or fame. He just wants attention from his parents, and Kenji's dad failed to give him that. But he must have his reasons, and Kenji should give him a chance to talk. Before Kenji can reply, his watch starts beeping. The baby developed more powers and broke out in the streets. 
She looks around for Kenji's pictures and runs after them. The KDF has noticed her and sends drones to catch her. The baby mistakes the drones as balls and hits them away. Afterward, she goes for a home run. Kenji eventually finds her but she starts climbing a tower. The KDF reaches there too and shoots the baby with tranquilizers. Luckily, Kenji catches her in time and takes her home. He immediately calls his dad and begs him to save the baby. Sato handles the baby really carefully and pulls out Kenji's childhood toy. While the baby is distracted by the toy, Sato fixes the dislocated joint. Meanwhile, Dr. Onda is analyzing the collected data and finds out that the baby has the ability to echolocate to find her way. If the KDF captures her, she can help them in reaching the Kaiju Island. Dr. Onda doesn't like to be a murderer, but he wants to complete this mission so no one loses his family like he did. Sato has already sensed Dr. Onda's intentions because it's the first time Onda is trying to capture a Kaiju alive. Even though Kenji doesn't like his dad, he has to work together with Sato for the sake of the baby. The best solution right now is to raise the baby till she becomes big enough to return to the island by herself. Even if they somehow find the island right now, the baby will not be able to survive there without her mother. Sato understands the situation really well and gets ready to become a responsible grandpa. He names the baby Emmy after his wife's name and installs a tracking chip inside her for safety. Sato's arrival makes Kenji's life far better than before. He takes care of Kenji's diet and sleep schedule and also teaches him how to be a good dad. Kenji also learns to keep balance between his professional and personal life. He starts performing better on the field day by day. Moreover, Emmy has made Kenji softer and more patient. He starts interacting with other teammates and also helps them in training. He's finally having a wider outlook on the world. To celebrate their success, Sato decides to have a family day out. He takes Kenji to their old house where he was born. It's almost the same. Sato has been visiting it quite often and his research maps prove that he looked for his wife everywhere. He also used to watch all of Kenji's baseball matches on repeat. Sato loved his wife and his son, but his responsibilities didn't let him spend more family time. He still misses being with his son. After seeing all this, Kenji realizes how wrong he was. He wants to make better memories and asks his dad to play with him right now. Emmy joins them too, and they enjoy the best baseball game of their lives. Later that night, Kenji asks his dad if he ever felt being not powerful enough. Sato takes a deep breath and reveals that he felt helpless and doubtful every day. It wasn't easy keeping balance between the life of a superhero and raising a family, but Kenji is doing far better than his dad. He managed three lives together, a superhero, a super player, and a super dad. Hearing this, Kenji feels satisfied with himself and stares at the sky. Suddenly, he notices something moving. It's the KDF. Emmy destroys all the drones, but then she goes into pupil stage. She's going to evolve soon. Kenji must take her to a safe place. KDF starts shooting blindly and injures Sato. Kenji gets really angry and turns into Ultraman to defend his family. Unfortunately, he doesn't realize that the KDF has installed a tracking device on Emmy. Kenji brings his family home and starts treating his dad. His heartbeat is stable, but the internal injuries are quite severe. Emmy finally breaks out of the cocoon with her new wings. Suddenly, they hear weird sounds which are coming from the east. It's Gigantron. He's back. Emmy recognizes the sound and flies after her real dad. Kenji gets ready to follow her, but before he can transform, the KDF blasts his house with missiles. Kenji survives and opens his eyes to find everything destroyed around him. His dad is no more, and Mina is also going to shut down soon. With the last bit of its energy, Mina confesses that she has seen Kenji since he was a baby. He picked up habits from both of his parents. He's a great baseball player, and he is meant to be Ultraman. But right now, he needs to be a responsible dad. Emmy's tracking chip is still active and Kenji must protect her. The Gigantron they saw is just a robot created to deceive Emmy and use her to locate the Kaiju Island. The KDF is gradually heading towards the island, but Ultraman gets in the way. Dr. Onda commands the fake Gigantron to attack Ultraman and kill him. Emmy gets in the way to protect Kenji, but gets injured herself. Kenji can't see anyone hurting his baby, and he starts beating the Gigantron wildly. Suddenly, he notices the flesh under the iron covering. It's not a robot, but an armor built around the real Gigantron. Kenji runs out of energy and falls in the water, but a giant hand saves him. It's Sato in his Ultraman form. He's alive. Onda orders to kill both Ultramen, 
but Emmy helps Gigantron to get out of the KDF's control. Seeing this, Dr. Onda asks his team to go back while he transforms into a giant robot to kill all the kaijus. Kenji teams up with Sato to save the kaijus and fulfills his mother's wish. They are protecting the city together. The kaijus join them too, and together, they beat the giant robot. Dr. Onda puts the robot on self-destruction that will be effective for several miles around it. To save others, Kenji sacrifices himself and locks the robot in his shield. Luckily, Kenji survives. He fractured his arm and can't play the final baseball match. However, he trained the team so well that they won the championship anyway. He also finds a bunch of voice messages from his mother. She's alive and wants Kenji to rescue her. But before that, Kenji needs to send his beloved Emmy back to her real home.